Hello, and in today's 5 Minute Friday, I'm going to be reviewing the latest updates to the Drone Link system and in particular showing the modern dashboard. Uh, one of the things that I really like about Drone Link is that it continues to evolve. And this is a major upgrade to the graphical interface. So there's a lot to cover, so I'm going to get straight to it. First off, if you don't see the modern dashboard, which is this one where the battery indicator shows as a, as a circle, the way to get to that is to go back to the main menu, select the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner and then under dashboard there's a drop down and you can select classic or you can select modern so select modern and then go back into the uh, dashboard okay next we've got a sort of a fairly typical view here going across the top um, the first thing that you're going to see is the mode that the drone is in. In this case, it's GPS. And um, then you're going to see any error messages that are popping up. We'll come back to the error messages later. Then you will see the battery indicator, in this case showing 92%. And you will see that it's got this circle with the green and the red. Personally, I really like this feature. It's really easy when you're out in the field to look at that and get a good idea of uh, how you're doing and whether you have plenty of battery. Then you've got the number of satellites that are locked and then the strength of the signal for both the remote controller and the HD video feed. Uh, the three dots we'll come back to in a little bit. Um, going down to the bottom left, you've got the typical map window. And, and what you can see here is the same as before effectively, which is in the top right hand corner of the small box of the map box. If you click that, um, that switches the view with the camera now in the bottom and the map on the top showing large. Um, I'm going to touch it again and we'll go back to the normal view. So th that one we've had before, but I want to show this one. It's quite an important one, one that I really like. In the top left hand corner of the small box of the map box, you'll see another icon with like a little square with, a, with an arrow in it. If you touch that, it maximizes the map in the left hand corner. And I really like this view, particularly, let me, let me select a, a mission because you can see what it looks like when there's a mission showing. And it, and it really shows a nice view here where you've got the mission showing, you can keep an eye on where the drone is in the mission, but it still gives you plenty of real estate on the right hand side to see the camera and all the controls. So I really like this view, but there's some customization for this view as well. So in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a a little cog. If you click on that, you get some map options. So one is reset, that'll take you back to this view. One is follow drone, and then there's also follow with north up. So if you select follow drone, it'll, it'll literally follow the drone where the drone is always facing forwards and the map will rotate around it. Um, if you select follow drone with north up, it will keep the drone in the center and the map will move around it. Uh, personally, I prefer the reset, the default, where you can just sort of see the whole thing and it all just moves. But those are, those are very useful options to have. So this is the view that I personally am really enjoying. There's a couple of other little strange things. If you look underneath the name of the mission, uh, next to the amount of time that mission is going to take, you'll see a little tiny downward facing arrow. If you select that, uh, we can't see it right here, but I can show you an example of it. Um, but if you're running a mission, in this black box that just showed up, there'll be text appearing that shows what exactly the drone is doing at various points in the mission. And if you want to minimize that, again, just click that little arrow next to the numbers underneath the, the title, and, we, and you go back to this view. So I'm going to stick with this view for the time being. So now let's take a look at something that's new that's down in the bottom right hand corner um, and that's this camera view. So you'll see there's a camera icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And if you see nothing next to it, then if you touch it, you'll see a whole bunch of information appear. And this information contains information about what the, the camera's doing and also, you know, some other information, how much space you have left and what video size you're, and frame rate you're set to and so on. But let's go through these quickly because not immediately obvious, but you can actually touch these little blobs and 
change those values. So if I touch, for example, ISO, which is currently set to 200, and I change it to 100, you'll see we can change this, this value. EM is your exposure mode. Um, that's your typical thing, auto, aperture priority, shutter priority, or manual. In auto, it pretty much controls everything. There's not much you can do. But if you switch, for example, to manual, and then close that window, now you can actually make changes of things like the f-stop. So I could make you know, the f 2.8 instead of f4, brighten the image there, and you know you can say what your shutter speed's gonna be. So I'll slow the shutter speed down to 1 30th. And you can see the EV is changing there. That tells you um, your EV value. If you go back to auto, then you can actually change the EV compensation directly. So I actually, strangely for the Mavic and the Phantom 4, I tend to like minus 0.3 EV. I find that gives it a pretty good um, value, but you can, you can change it to be whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna set that to 0.3. If you're in auto and you try and change the shutter speed or the aperture, um, it won't let you, it will say you're unable to do that while set to this exposure mode. And that makes perfect sense. And then of course you have the typical white balance. You can set that to auto, sunny, cloudy, whatever you need. So that's your camera functions there. And then there's a little line you'll see. And if you touch to the right of that white line, you get a whole bunch of new options that open up. So going from the top of this now, you've got your storage location. If your drone has the ability to store to different locations, I'm using a Mavic 2 for this demonstration. So we can store to the SD card or internally. And you can also, it tells you space remaining, and you can also format that card. So if I click format and say format, and it says, are you sure? And now it's formatted. And now you can see that the space remaining has gone up to 59 gigabytes. It's a 64 gigabyte card. Um, and then below the line, you've got these things that you can basically turn on or off. So in this case, um, histogram, I like the histogram. Uh, it's pretty small, I'm gonna turn it on. And if you turn on the histogram, you can move this wherever you want it to be. So I'll put it over here, sort of out of the way. Um, tap to focus and spot meter, manual focus controls and auto exposure lock toggle. I'm gonna go through these. Once you turn those on, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, you now have some additional icons. The first one is this green square with circle. If I touch somewhere in the screen, the camera will focus on whatever I touch. And it will do that automatically. If you want to manually focus, you can touch the square next to it where it says AF, and it will change to MF, and now you can manually focus by sliding this up or down. And if you ever wanna just go back to autofocus, you can just touch, it automatically focuses, and it resets to autofocus. But what else can we do here? If I touch the green square itself, you'll see it changes to a yellow square or a yellow sort of symbol. And if I touch the screen now, what it will do is wherever I touch the screen, it will use that area for exposure metering. It's kind of dark back here, so you're not really going to see much of a difference. But if I pointed it up at the sky and touched the screen, um, you would see it would it would spot focus on, let's say, the sky, and you could darken things down quite considerably. So let's see, can I get some sky in here? Yeah, okay, let's go up. So maybe, there you go, look, you'll see that the rest of it darkens because it's exposing for the sky. If you touch that circle again, if you actually click within the area that you just touched, it goes back to sort of center, um, center loading the exposure metering so you can turn that on and off um, for most people if you unless you've got a specific thing you're just going to want the center loading but um, that's a good way to do it and then this um, icon in the bottom right hand corner the little padlock with the AE this is for exposure auto exposure locking and this is actually a really useful item because when you're particularly when you're filming commercially one thing that you don't want is the exposure, you might want to turn on the auto exposure sometimes because it's quite useful, but you don't want the exposure changing dramatically at an inopportune moment. So let's say you were doing an orbit around something and you wanted it to stay constant 
throughout a consistent piece of it or you're doing trucking shots around a building um, and you want that to be consistent, what you can do there is you can set the exposure and then you hit this AE lock and it will lock and it won't change the exposure now until you unlock it and then relock it. So I find myself doing that. I'll find a, you know, an opportune time during the during the particular shot where I go, okay, I don't mind changing the exposure here and then I'll unlock it and relock it. Um, and when you unlock it, it will adjust. And then when you relock it, it'll lock it again. So that's uh, the auto exposure lock, something that I use pretty regularly. Uh, I was very happy to see that that had been added to the modern dashboard. Now, if we go back into this camera section by clicking in the bottom right hand corner next to the camera icon, we pull up these uh, functions that we've just been through. But you'll see at the top, you kind of have tabs with different icons. So there's a drone icon, there's the camera that we just went through, there's the gimbal, and then there's a, a settings icon. I think it's called settings. Let's, let's go through those one at a time. So the top left hand side, click on the drone. It gives you some information about your drone. It also allows you to see and change things like the maximum flight altitude, return to home altitude and so on and so forth. So this is actually quite useful. If you're out and about and you need to change either of those, you can do that right there. It tells you where your home point is and you can calibrate the compass. And you can see here, I do need to calibrate the compass. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to click calibrate. And it says, it's asking me to rotate 360 degrees horizontally and then 360 degrees vertically. And now you'll see the, the error message has gone away and we're ready to and we're ready to fly. So you can calibrate that. There's also um, a function to pair the repair the remote controller. And there's this virtual sticks. This one's an interesting one. I'm going to click on it. And what you see here is down in the bottom, you get this section where it says take control and you have these virtual sticks that you can move around. Now, I will tell you, if you take control, if you push the take control button, it will immediately take off. So be careful doing that because if you're not ready for it, it doesn't ask you, it just takes off. So just be very careful before you do that. Um, if, you, if you don't want to use the virtual sticks and you just want to use the regular sticks, just press close and, and that message goes away. So now let's go back into that area again and we'll select the gimbal icon. So you've got the gimbal mode, which is your and follow by default. That means you get nice smooth video. The other option is FPV. Um, that way the, the, the camera is locked. And if you tilt the drone, then the, the camera tilts. Um, you've got your current attitude of the gimbal and it says it's pointing straight down. And sure enough, it does indeed look like it's pointing straight down. There we go, I'm gonna pan up. Now, I could have, instead of doing that, um, what I could have done was gone into this mode, selected gimbal and said reset. And the first time you reset, it goes down to minus 90. And if you reset again, it goes up to zero. Um, if you have a drone where the gimbal can move left and right, then it will also reset it to point forward. So that can be quite, uh, quite useful. And if you're having trouble where the drone uh, horizon is not correct, which some drones seem to have more of an issue than others. You can select this adjust trim and you get these controls at the bottom to adjust your, your roll trim. Um, and you can do that on the fly. So that's actually a really useful function as well. So let's go back. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the end of the gimbal function. Let's go into the settings now. And here you've got some interesting ones, quick access button on the fly or home. Um, I believe that means instead of accessing on the fly, it, return, it does a return to home. Um, I need to test that myself. The distance reference is home or the device, but if you select the device, 
it does require a device that has a GPS in it for accuracy, because otherwise you're really not sure where you are. Uh, this, this device does not have a GPS, and my drone is about 10 feet away from me, and it says it's 75 feet. It's clearly not 75 feet, so I'm going to go back to home. Okay. Um, and then you've got these toggles again, GPS drone coordinates, heading and gimbal angle, grid, and reticule. Right, so if you turn on all of those and go back, you'll see you'll see you've got everything here. So the blue box is the reticule. The lines show you the um, the grid. Um, down in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got the drone heading and the gimbal angle, and then the GPS location. I don't generally like most of those, so I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to turn off all but the heading and the attitude, which I actually do like to see. So that's another, another useful thing. And then one of the most interesting is way at the bottom, you've got this mission accomplished confetti. So this is a, I think somebody in the, the development team had a bit of a sense of humor, but when you select this and you can see what happens. Now what happens is when the mission completes, you get a nice little sprinkle of confetti going across the screen. To, to let you know that you've happily completed that mission. Uh, one last thing is the camera modes. So just above the record icon, you can see that we've got a little video camera. Um, if you select on that, you get your typical options. You get video, single shot, HDR, hyperlight, panorama, burst, AEB, and interval. Um, so these are all things that you can select. So I could select AEB and it would, it would now do auto exposure bracket. And if I go back to video, now we're back to where we were. There are still some functions that need to be migrated over from the classic dashboard, and I'm sure they'll show up at some point. So as a good example, um, if you need to change the number of shots that the auto exposure bracket um, handles, you can only currently do that in the classic dashboard um, at the time of, of recording this video. But I, I fully expect that to be... Um, to be added in the future. Another one that you will need to do in the classic dashboard at the moment is changing the video size and frame rate. Currently, you'll see I've got that 4K 30 frames a second. But if you wanted to change that to something else, you would need to jump into the classic dashboard. Um, or with both of those, you, what you might want to do is include the number of exposure brackets or the frame rate um, and the frame or the video size in whatever mission you've got. If you haven't already seen it, go back to my five minute Friday on what I called setup missions to, to see what you've got there. Anyway, that's it. That's uh, uh, as quick as I could go through pretty much everything. I'm sure this isn't a five minute video, but hopefully people will find that useful. And if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to leave a comment or uh, get back to me through the website at aviusmedia.com.